And we're here with Nick Holmes. Nick Holmes is the vocalist of Paradise Lost. Obsidian has made an impact on music charts all across the world, Nick. Uh, what is it about Obsidian you think that people are connecting with? Um, I mean, it's we always use our last album as a, as a kind of reference point, and the last album is a very specific doom death metal album, and, and this one we mm-hmm. wanted to perhaps shake up the styles a little bit more, and it's quite, I mean, every, every song's pretty different on it. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's a lot more varied than the last album. Um, I guess releasing at this time as well um, is something as well, you know, because uh, it's such a crazy time we're living in at the moment. So that's also, uh, perhaps people are listening to it more than maybe they would have done um, mm-hmm. with the lockdown thing, etc. cetera. So, uh, so, yeah, but I mean, you know, mainly I think, you know, it's, it's more varied than the last album, I think. Sure. Are you, are you talking like maybe like from melodics or song structures or what, what, what about it do you think is I mean, is it's just, you know, I mean, yeah, melodic, there's some heavier songs, faster, slower, some are more melodic than other songs is kind of more mm-hmm. death metal, typical sort of stuff, more doom metal. There's, there's a lot of, everything's in, in the in the pot, you know, I think with this one more than the last one, which was very specific doom death, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was reading that uh, this is your guys' 16th studio album release. I was like, yeah. 16? Mm-hmm. That's a lot of albums, man. How does it, How does it feel to have that enormous library of work behind you? Yeah, it's. I mean, it goes pretty fast. I mean, we started the band in 1988, um, mm-hmm. so we've been going 32 years. Um, once you start on the cycle of recording, writing, recording, and touring albums, it, it flies by. You know, it's it's. You know, we've just, this is all we've done since we were, you know, kids really. So mm-hmm. the, the whole process of, of of touring, you know, that takes a couple of years, and before you know it, you've done a decade. And I can, mm-hmm. I can remember the anniversary of the, the decade, you know, and I thought, oh my God, I can't believe 10 years. It's such a long time. Yeah. And now we're on 32 and it's insane, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, we, I mean, you know, we still love doing it. We absolutely love it as much as personally I love it, as much as, as, as I've ever loved it, you know, at any time in my life. So, uh, so I feel very lucky that we can still do it, you know. Um, so mm-hmm. it's as long as we can, we're going to still do it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And with, you know, the world, as you kind of mentioned, it's in total disarray right now. And what are your guys's, I mean, I'm sure this kind of messed up some future plans, but what are you guys' plans now and how have you all been holding up, you specifically? Um, I mean, we, when it first started happening, we were about to do um, a promotional tour anyway. We were going to go over to, mm-hmm. to Germany and a few places in Europe to, to a promote, promote tour. We, so we just done that basically online. So, I mean, we, we'd done a huge amount of press via Skype. For this yeah. album, so we that, so that hasn't affected that aspect of it. Um, playing live, uh, I mean, we got some booked in September. Uh, like we're going to do like a uh, an album show. We're going to play just the album. Um, uh, it's hard to say if that's you know. We hope it. Fingers crossed. It, we hope it happens. But the so, but the social gathering is the last thing that's going to open up. You know, so all mm-hmm. musicians are going to find this is a, is a kind of universal problem when everyone else is back at work and everyone's kind of mo- normal kind of life. I think you know right. the, the, the gathering is going to be an issue for. A, well, who knows? You know, we don't know. I, and everyone's opening up at different times, and people have it worse in other places. And so we'll, we'll see. But I mean, well, you know, whenever we can get out there and play live, we, we're going to be out there. I mean, this is the longest. I think I, I've ever gone with, you know, not playing a show in a, in a, I can't remember the last time. So it's, yeah, I mean, we're all absolutely itching to get out there and play again, as, as is, you know, all our peers as well. All my, me and my friends, that's all we talk about, you know. So, so yeah, yeah, we're looking forward to, you know, finally getting out again at some point. Mm-hmm. And what have you been doing to kind of maintain your own sanity at home? <laughs> I mean, when we're not touring, we we actually do have quite a lot of time at home. So uh, it's not for me personally. It's not that different. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know, I I kind of tinker around. I like to build computers. I like video games. I, I uh, there's always something to do. I'm never really bored. I, I never find myself bored. Um, but I've got my family living at home. My, my kids are working from home as well. So we've got a bit of a full house. But mm-hmm. apart from that, it's um, it's for me personally not that not that different. You know, I kind of miss going to the pub on a Saturday. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're starting to kind of open things up again, at least where I'm at. Uh, I'm in Oregon. Oh, and yeah. it almost feels like now that I can go in places again, it's messing with my head. It almost feels wrong. I'm like, I'm glad I could do this again. But <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, I'm the same going in like the supermarkets because I, mm-hmm. I always feel like I shouldn't be in there. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, I know exactly what you mean. I, I kind of don't like it. It's, and everyone's very cautious of each other. And the distancing thing is like a, a, a massive issue. It's such a weird thing mm-hmm. to deal with. Uh, so, 
Yeah, everyone's kind of in the same boat. I mean, yeah, it's very weird. It's I don't think there'll be anything else in our lifetime. No, it's strange. I hope not. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, agreed, agreed. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, you know, I was thinking about um, when you mentioned that everybody, you know, your peers, they're itching to get out and and uh, and play live music again. It kind of reminded me of I've been hearing, listen to a lot of other podcasts, and a lot of them feature stand up comedians and. The stand-up comedians are also feeling that way. They're like, we got to get out there and kind of hone our craft. And, you know, <laughs> it, do you, do you, it kind of reminds me of that. Like, do you fear like, oh, man, when we get out there for our first show, there's going to be some rust that we got to get out, you know, get uh, off Possibly, us. yeah. I mean, we're, we're planning on, you know, we're planning on doing a rehearsal before we hit the road for sure. I mean, yeah, we're not going to just kind of go out there without not doing anything. That would be insane. But <laughs> Yeah, um, right. Yeah, I mean, we're already, you know, I'm I'm already planning like set lists for things already now, and it's kind of, you know, we're looking at a month or a couple of months before we can do anything. But I'm already thinking about stuff. So uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. That it's just, I think once people see shows, it's going to be like, wow, you know, it's so long. You kind of, you know, you don't miss something. You don't realize how much you miss something until it's gone away, you know. And, and that's a uh, kind of caught in an eye maiden lyric there. But there's a lot of truth in that, I think. You know, have you guys been? you know, writing? Because I've heard of a lot of bands that are like, you know, we got nothing else to do, so we're just going to keep writing new material. Um, I haven't personally. I I, I kind of, because this is real uncertainty around it, doesn't. I don't find that very productive. I like to be mm -hmm. kind of feel in a good good frame of mind if I'm trying to write things. And when I feel a bit uncertain or a bit unsure, I don't, I don't like that. I don't find that a positive, that's a positive feeling. So I, I get it why people... You know, I might just come, some people just write all the time, you know, there's just people, mm -hmm. people like that. But I have to be in certain moods, and I haven't personally felt that way since all this started. Right, right. Yeah, you know, shifting the focus a little bit, because we cover a lot of metal, and it just seems lately, really for the last, like, year and a half, two years, um, maybe even longer, is that death metal and doom metal, they're kind of, they're it. They're like the popular subgenres right now. And... You know, I wanted to ask you because you're somebody who's like so well versed and so experienced in in doom and death. What is it specifically about doom and even the combination of those two genres that makes that subgenre so special? Um, I guess I mean it, it, it is heavy metal. That is heavy metal to me. You know, Black Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously set the ball rolling. You know, I mean, obviously this. Mm -hmm. Or the bands from the, you know, you could say Led Zeppelin, but I mean that wasn't metal to me. That was a different sort of thing. I mean, Sabbath really got the ball rolling with it, and um, you know that 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 is heavy metal to me completely. You know, and I mean, and, and death metal was just taking that to more extreme edge with really. it. I guess it, it's you know it just took mm -hmm. that and made it even more and more extreme, and black metal took it even further. I guess you know, so um, so yeah, I mean each, you know, each, each generation kind of does a twist on what's gone before it, I suppose. Um, and bands like Trouble and Candlemas were kind of taking the Doom thing to a certain element more than... Mm -hmm. And then obviously other bands went off in the new direction and did more death metal. So, uh, But, I mean, it completely goes hand in hand, I think, Doom and death metal. You know, we always thought that from a very, very uh, early age. Um, you know, we, we always combined the two. Uh, there wasn't really many bands combining the two, I don't think, when we started, if, if any, to be mm -hmm. honest. But uh, for us, it always went hand in hand with it, you know. Yeah, I also think it's interesting too because you guys kind of got to like come up with the the birth of death metal, you know, almost. I don't know when that. I know there's a lot of you know, uh, it's a loaded question to ask, like who created death metal. <laughs> but, yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, Venom were probably you know, even though it's not death metal as we know it, uh, mm -hmm. I would say they were probably one of the first to come up with a seriously over the top kind of metal thing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I was I was in a Venom probably about nineteen. 84. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the first time I heard them and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I never heard anything so crazy. The same with uh, Metallica when they did Kill mm -hmm. Em All as well. It was like a, a guitar sound no one had ever heard before. It was just right. So I, I guess a combination of those two bands drove it forward and, and then there's, we could start getting bands like Death or when they were mm -hmm. called Mantis prior to that or Possessed. Uh, yeah. Probably one of the first death metal bands on, onto vinyl, I think, really, that I can mm -hmm. think of. Uh, so yeah, it's a combination of like the early Metallica and the, and the early Venom definitely spawned it. I think. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's just crazy to me because, I, you know, when uh, Michael and I coming up, it was like, you know, new wave of American heavy metal metalcore. Yeah. And then and then we've got to see it progress from there to what it is today, 
and then you guys have another you know decade or so oh, yeah. on us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's just yeah, crazy I mean, to look back things in hindsight. Yeah, I mean, so like three or four years can make a big difference for sure. You know, there's a, if, if something comes along that has a big impact, like like you said, metal core and the, and the new metal stuff definitely had a massive impact, huge impact. Mm-hmm. Uh, before mm-hmm. that, the, the the last one before that I could think of was probably grunge. Yeah, which it had a bit of an impact for sure, but not as much as metal core. Uh, sorry, the the you know bands like Corn etc. They really mm-hmm. changed metal. I think, especially modern bands that I hear, I can tell mm-hmm. somewhere down the line they've probably got a Corn album at home. You know, you can really hear right. it. I think. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Nick, we want to usually halfway through the interview here, we do uh, these lightning round questions. So they're just kind of quicker, fun questions. Yeah, uh, no worries. So we're going to go through those and then, you know, wrap it up with you. OK, yeah, man. Um, so I was perusing your your Twitter and your Instagram and <laughs> I, I'm going to ask you questions related to both. Yeah. I noticed you post a lot of travel related photos on the Instagram and yeah. then you discuss a lot of horror films on Twitter. So I have Two questions, but I'll ask one at a time. Um, what would you say has been your favorite place or places to travel? Um, oh, I mean, I, uh, I change as I get older. I, I my 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 taste change, and I like. I mean, I like going to. Uh, I went to India when I was very young, and I went again recently, mm-hmm. and I absolutely loved it. Now, when I went before, I wasn't that keen, but I liked it. But more now and i've been to thailand quite i mean thailand's great i like vietnam as well you know um, mm-hmm. vietnam was great i had a great um there's a lot of places in asia beautiful places um i don't know it's, it's it's really difficult to say um but i mean i love going to america as well i love coming to the states i, I love mm-hmm. visiting the states so uh um it's hard to say because i once i've been somewhere i i kind of like to go somewhere else the next time right, right. And we do go back to the same places again but different parts of the same country or whatever so but uh, it's a tough one to say. But yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of beautiful places in Asia for sure. Mm-hmm. I'm jealous of that. I really would like to visit some parts of Asia, a lot of parts of Asia someday. Um, when when you are traveling, are you more of a, you know, like, let's go to like all the local places to eat? Or do you like to go see the sites? Or what do you like to do when you're like in somewhere new? Uh, do a bit of both. I mean, you can do so much research on the internet now. I mean, you, 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 mm-hmm. you don't have to go wrong. You know, it's not like in the traveling in, in, the, in the 70s or something sure you can, sure you can really research things and uh, yeah you can re- and i even enjoy doing you know the, the itinerary for, for the day i really enjoy mm-hmm. that aspect you know getting up really early spending all yeah. day out doing like mm-hmm. thirty thousand steps or whatever mm-hmm. just doing everything that you can possibly do in the area where you are mm-hmm. and then you mm-hmm. know going on to the next place and we don't usually stay in one place for more than a few days you right know, three right. days at hit uh and it's it's actually quite exhausting but it's the best way to see somewhere i think you know <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I, yeah. I remember just going to uh, Las Vegas with with my girlfriend and I had been there before. She hadn't been there, but I was like, we got to walk the strip a few yeah, times. Yeah. And then we checked our steps at the end of the day. It's like, geez, <laughs> we've done 40,000 steps. Yeah, no wonder we're for that. dead. Yeah, you could, I mean, especially a place like Rome. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you go to Rome, I mean, you can do oh, you can do like 10 miles a day easily in Rome. It's, it's just because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it says 0.7 miles. So you think, oh, it's not that far. I'll walk it. Yeah. And before you know it, you just clocked up the miles, you know, so on. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> and then the, the second part of my question is, what got you into horror movies? And do you have a hands-down favorite? Um, I, I started, like, when I was a kid, my, my parents used to go out on a Saturday night to the pub or whatever, and they used to drop me at my grandma's house. And at mm-hmm. my grandma's house, they used to have like a horror double bill, it was called, on, on, BBC, mm-hmm. on the BBC, uh, BBC Two. Yeah. And they were sure two horror movies from that from the 70s when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I was probably far too young to watch these films. I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> but mm-hmm. I used to watch these films and uh, I was just massively hooked on horror films just since being, you know, like eight, eight, seven or eight years old, really. But mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm just sort of revisiting these films that I watched when I was a kid now. So I'm really enjoying it. It's like a, a kind of midlife crisis I'm having mm-hmm. about. But sure. I'm just like, sitting there, you know, with a couple of beers watching these films from like 1973. And I'm, it's just fantastic. I'm just... There's so many good films that I'd have missed as well, you know, that I'm mm-hmm. able to get. I mean, like uh, Amazon Prime's got some great old horror films on mm-hmm. there, you know. Which, but uh, yeah, the, the 70s was, I think, the, the golden decade. I couldn't really think of anything. A lot of the Vincent Price stuff is great, you know, uh, the, mm-hmm. the Dr. Mm-hmm. Fives films, they, they really sort of set, set the pace for a lot of what was to follow. But I find the 80s period of films uh, doesn't really, I'm not really into that, you know. Uh, sure, although like I made, the slasher. Yeah, Whatever. it's yeah. I was into it at the time, but when I watch them now, I they, they don't really. I think the seventy, this late sixties, early seventies stuff is is the the golden mm-hmm. stuff for me. Yeah, I think you posted about um, 
Rosemary's Baby. On yeah, I believe that I've movie is that, that movie yeah. is fucked up. <laughs> yeah, but it's you know there's a lot of films that I for whatever reason you know you know I just never seen and I never got around to seeing. So it's really great. Uh, taking a few hours aside at night to um, it's just an excuse to drink wine really but just keep that to myself <laughs> right right <laughs> um so we'll, we'll move on to the next question here when thinking about uh because i kept reading about uh the way your vocals had progressed over the year but when you think about the progression of your vocals from album one to 16 would you say it was a natural progression or is there a lot of thought put into how you were going to kind of progress your vocals as the albums went on um, it's been pretty natural. I mean, each album's been, there's been a, a good chunk of time between each albums. Apart from the first few albums, they seem like it was year after year. The first, I, when I look at the dates, I can't believe we did them very much back to back in in the early days. But there's been a mm-hmm. good chunk of time between. Uh, I remember um, probably around the time we did Shades of God is the time when I wanted to change the voice. I didn't want to do just the death metal voice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much after the album, you know, Icon, the voice was considerably different. Uh, but it was very much a, a change in the, in the gears. I remember just thinking, you know, you could do more if you broaden the voice and, you know, have cleaner parts. You can do more melody lines, and it's not just relying on guitar-driven melodies. You can do vocal-driven mm-hmm. melodies. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, it was around probably 93, around 93 that, mm-hmm. that I actually thought, oh, let's let's shift the gears a little bit. And then it went on and on and on, and then we kind of came back around again a few mm-hmm. years ago, back to the right. different voice again. So, But uh, I think things like, you know, when, when you – the music that you listen to as a kid, the death metal stuff we listened to growing up, it's always there. You know, it's always along. It's always part of our, you know, our, our lives and very much the mm-hmm. soundtrack to our lives in the, mm-hmm. you know, the, the years from 15 to 23. You know, very important years growing up. And, yeah. Uh, that oh, music's yeah. still with us and it'll never die. You know, you might put it on the shelf for a couple of years, but you don't. It never leaves really. You know, you can still get back into mm-hmm. it later on. You know. Yeah, that's that's so true. I, I tell people all the time that. You know, those formative years, like you said, 15 to 23, or whether it's like whenever you kind of get into that music that becomes your genre, um, that always sticks with you. I always go back to albums, even if they're not that great in hindsight. I yeah, still, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, nostalgia. Totally. I, yeah. The, I mean, you know, there's looking at album covers from the past. There's some album covers that I think now, you know, why did they do that? But <laughs> but at the time, <laughs> they just made total sense. You know, it's, it's just, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I, yeah, no, certainly, uh, the, the, you know, the, the old stuff can't beat it you know yeah now we had a this segues nicely because we had a lot of talk about missing playing live uh you personally and from a vocal perspective what is your favorite song of paradise <laughs> lost to perform live um probably let me think uh i mean no hope in sight is a real because i i i think of it as quite a new song even though it's quite mm-hmm. old now but, but it's it's not very old but it is yeah. it's old, yeah. but it's not ancient uh, so mm-hmm. i i think of it's always nice to play that and it always goes down really well it's a very popular song it's as popular as anything else we ever do mm-hmm. uh, maybe even more so um so uh, that's yeah that's a that's a fun song to do and it's a very kind of triumphant song and yeah mm-hmm. I, I i always like to do that one yeah yeah that i think that was like 2015 or something i remember that uh hearing that song for the first time and that was yeah, one of the first times I think I ever heard you guys. I was like, wow, this right. is it's fucking righteous. Yeah. I play, play within. Yeah. So yeah, it wasn't, oh, it wasn't that long ago, but yeah, it's, uh, but when you say new, you know, people just think you mean like six months ago. or something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. No, I think that I still consider that relatively new, even though it's yeah. been like five years, but time flies. So it, it's nice to do newer songs that are, are as popular as the really old songs. You know, it's nice to be able to mm-hmm. do you know, something from each mm-hmm. album and it, and, it, and it gets a, a positive response, you know, so right. you're not relying on, mm-hmm. you know, kind of cert, you're just playing draconian time stuff, which was probably our most successful album. But, you know, it's, mm-hmm. you can do stuff from very you know, different periods in, in the band's career. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite like British exclusive food. I'm talking something that you pretty much are only going to find in Great Britain. I don't really. I don't know what I don't know what British food is anymore. Really, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I Spotted mean, dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. I don't know. I'm just trying. To th- the last time I, I probably ate British food. What is class as British food was probably when I was at school. So that was a long time ago. I mean, mm-hmm. um, I mean, my favorite food would probably be even Thai or Thai or uh, Indian, really. But that's. Mm-hmm. Uh, class is what typically British. I'd say uh, I don't. Know, I mean, fish and chips. I don't eat fish, so the chips without the fish, <laughs> perhaps some some fries. <laughs> yeah, the fries. The English version of fries. They're kind of stodgy and okay. they're good. They're good when you got a hangover, though. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. 
That's <laughs> always uh, that always can be much needed. The carbs. I yeah. always. Uh, for me, for whatever reason, uh, it, especially in college, after a hangover, waking up, going to McDonald's, I don't know why that was... It's that assault, isn't it? It's assault levels, I think. Yeah, it's mm, got to yeah. be. It's something like that, yeah. Just <laughs> the most unhealthy food, just cover it up. Well, you crave it, then when you have it, you wish you hadn't bothered. You know, that, that's yeah, the usual exactly. standard McDonald's thing. That I, that I, <laughs> yep. Why do I do this to myself? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. This might be a challenging one, and I'm sure you've been asked this before. Do you have a favorite Paradise Lost album, and why? Uh, I don't have a favorite. No, it's it's. Uh, I can't. It's, it's impossible to answer. I always like the newest thing we've done, so I'll say the sure. new album. I, sure. I just do because it's. Mm-hmm. I'm still discovering the songs myself in a recorded mm-hmm. form, you know, because we haven't recorded mm-hmm. them. But, you know, they were recorded at Christmas, so I'm still yeah. getting into the, the recorded finished versions of them. So, mm-hmm. uh, other than that, I mean, I think, you know, I think the host album, the, the controversial host album, which I think is mm-hmm. a great album. I still, there's a lot of songs on that I really love. I think it's, it's, a, it's a great album. It's not a metal album, but I, I still mm-hmm. think it's a very, very good uh, album by us. Uh, I would put it in my top three for sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's difficult. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've I was going to analog- use the old cliche, it's like choosing your children. Yes, right? that's, yes, that's, I was just going to say that. <laughs> that. That road is too well worn. <laughs> yeah. Go down that. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, last question. What is something people would be surprised to know about you? Um, that I, I like to have, a, have fun. That mm-hmm. seems to be... Something that people are very surprised to see. <laughs> I mean, I guess, a, if you I guess it's if like you you're in a death and gloom band, so you yeah, know, yeah. The the, gloom, but yeah. also, when, and also when you're not kind of smiling at the mm-hmm. same time, you know, well, you know, we'll listen to the music. You know, of course, we're mm-hmm. not going to be. You know, we're not game show hosts, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, but yeah, no, we we do have a. We actually, you know, as a band, we actually do have a lot of fun. You know, I think. Being able to laugh together is a very important part of any relationship. Oh, you know? Absolutely, and, uh, it does drive things forward for sure. You know, you've got to be able, you know, ironically, uh, you've got to be able to laugh at things as well. So yeah, it's it seems like an ongoing thing. I mean, obviously, my social media, I mean, my Twitter account is just absolute nonsense. It's just messing around most of the time. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I, I do like to have a lot of fun. It's maybe some, I don't know, defense mechanism that I, I have where I always try sure. and take the piss out of everything. But uh, yeah, having fun is is very important. I think you know. All right, Nick, you made it through our barrage of questions there um <laughs> no worries. do you have anything else you'd like to add before we wrap it up today uh no just nice to speak to you um i hope we can get over to the states next year you know i really really yeah. do fingers crossed the last trip we did there was was great i remember it was it we played portland i think i remember that showing mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. yeah yes. yeah we went to the pizza place outside massive pizza i remember that um, oh yeah <laughs> yeah so no, it was uh, so yeah. The 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 tour, the tour, the last tour was great, and yeah, hopefully we can do the same thing again. And take care, everyone, and cheers. Thanks for the support, and check out our new album. I suppose you know. Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us, Nick. Thanks take care. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks.